Hey guys, this is Lucas from Enviral Design, and this is video number two in the GeoPix LED Pixel Mapper walkthrough guide. Uh, in this video, I want to talk to you about the panel editor, kind of what it does, how to use it, and uh, the two main aspects of it, which is generators and um, drawing stuff out manually by hand with the CAD tools. So, uh, what we have here is just a quick, uh, quick sketch I did. We have the yellow and the purple. The purple is your LED signal chain. Starts at zero, goes to however many LEDs you've drawn out. The animation moves in the direction that the signal flows. And then you have your border, which is in yellow. And the border can be anything. You don't even have to use it later, but it needs to be there. It needs to have something. Uh, so what the border does for you, if you decide to use it in the pixel map editor, you can use it to snap panels to each other. So if you've got several uh, pixel perfect panels that need to be lined into a video wall or something like that, you can use the, the border to, s to snap these together uh, as they would be aligned physically. So, uh, very useful. Anyways, let's go ahead and clear this out of our workspace uh, and let's just kind of start from scratch here. A uh, quick note about um, all the tabs. This one is no different. If you hold Q uh, and, hover and hover over any UI element, you're going to get a tooltip. Uh, here we have a tooltip for the grid, which basically gives us our navigation and hotkey controls. Control snaps to grid, shift uh, will lock to an axis, H will home the camera, and S will snap to other LEDs. Uh, and in regards to the grid, uh, you've got the major grid lines, right, and you have the, the darker um, sub subdivisions. Uh, the way that works is over here in the, in the settings we have one and four, so this is grid lines every in units, so this means we have uh, one major grid line every centimeter, and then we have four subdivisions of this of this unit. Uh, the number of grid lines is simply how big your grid is. Increase that number, make your grid bigger. So, okay. Uh, so in this first uh, mode over here in the LED definition mode, uh, if you hold Control, you can go and snap something to the center, um, and you can just start sketching out your LEDs uh, like so. And this is the easiest way to go. If you have a very consistent pitch and you set up your grid, this, this will get you from A to Z pretty quickly. Um, now, if you have 100 pixels, this might seem kind of tedious. Uh, so there's a few ways to automate this. Uh, let's start again from the grid. And let's draw another one over here um, to this spot. Uh, and now let's take a look over here. We've got Smart Duplicate and fill last stroke. These are two really great tools. Uh, depending on how you've measured out your, your structure or how you want to measure it, you don't necessarily have to measure the coordinate of every LED. For, for example, if you have a panel with 100 LEDs and you know the pitch, uh, you can use the pitch much more easily um, and quickly than measuring out the coordinates of every LED. So uh, let's say our pitch is exactly two centimeters. Uh, we can use Smart Duplicate and we can just keep that that train going. So now if we go up here and go back this way, we can Smart Duplicate back this way. And basically what Smart Duplicate does, it takes the distance and the vector between the last two LEDs and it duplicates the next one in that along that same line. So if I do one here and do Smart Duplicate, it goes off in that direction. So uh, very useful. Um, the other one to be aware of, let's say you know where your finishing LED is, and you also know how many LEDs are between these two LEDs. Um, so let's clear this to make this a little bit simpler. Let's say you have an LED strip. Um, <clears throat> let's, let's say it's 20 centimeters long. Uh, we're gonna, I'll come back to absolute and relative here in a sec. Um, but, and so we know, we know how long the strip is, right? We know how long, where the last LED is located, but then we we also just know how many LEDs are in between these two. So let's, if we have a 10, a 10 LED strip and we've just placed the last LED at 20, we know we have eight LEDs left. So we can just simply fill last stroke with, uh, and you can also type in the number if, if you want, you don't have to hit plus 50 times. Um, and so then once you get that, you can just hit fill last stroke with, and now you've essentially uh, subdivided your strip or the last segment of your strip with the pixels needed to um, to make that to make that happen, so that's just another way to to do the same thing. Again, it depends how you measure stuff. 
If you know A and Z, but you, and you know how many LEDs you have in between, this is a very easy way to do it. Otherwise, you can use Smart Duplicate if you want, if you just know the pitch and how many you have to go. Just a lot of different ways to do the same thing. So, uh, absolute and relative. Uh, absolute is pretty straightforward. You just type in a number, and the last LED you placed goes to that coordinate. So, um, relative is, is a little different. If you hold control, uh, I'm sorry, let's hold S. S will snap you to LEDs. Uh, let's say we want, to, we, know, we know we want LED number six to be uh, a centimeter above number three, but we don't exactly know where three is uh, in world space, and we also don't know where number six is in world space. Well, there's another way to kind of gauge that. If you know it's one centimeter above three, we'll just snap it to three and do a relative Y of one. Uh, and then you get your relative offset. And then you can do one over and one up. You can do negative one. I mean, you can do whatever you want from here. Um, so this is just another way to place an LED based on the information you may or may not have. So sometimes you have the coordinates for every LED. Sometimes you have the pitch. Sometimes you have the relative offset for another LED. Uh, do what's easiest. Don't measure any more than you have to in real life. This will speed up your workflow considerably. Um, Okay, so that's strips um, and drawing stuff out manually. Um, borders work the same way, by the way. I'm not going to go ahead and get too into that. Relative, absolute, all the same. So, generators. Um, generators are fun. Uh, let's start with uh, let's just start with the grid because this is a very common one for most people. Most people might use LED strips to build their own panels. Maybe you're a DIY guy. Maybe you're just uh, uh, just doing your own thing, or you have a custom thing. Uh, or whatever. Uh, this is a great generator to use because you can uh, you can specify a lot of options just based on uh, you, know, you can do you can do a lot of generation without drawing your stuff out manually just by typing in settings. So you have center center point basically is where uh, the panel is in the world space. This doesn't matter too much unless you're adding other stuff to the panel or other stuff comes before it. Uh, because when you export something from the panel editor, it centers uh, itself automatically. So your, your um, pivot point will always be in the middle of the panel. So you don't have to worry about drawing stuff in the middle of the grid, although sometimes it helps, uh, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, scale is just that, uh, scale X and Y. Um, notice this is the only generator that has pitch because um, this would be an, a situation where you might know the pitch, but you don't really feel like calculating the, the scale X and Y. So if you know you have a, pi a pixel pitch of 1.6, for example, which is a pretty common pitch. I think it's the 60 meter, I'm not sure. Um, you get your pitch and it automatically adjusts your scale. In this case, uh, it's very easy to calculate that because you have 10 by 10 and, and you know, a fact, factor of 10. So not that difficult anyways. Now, of course, you can rotate this as well um, if you want. Um, this is, again, not that useful because you can rotate this stuff in the pixel map editor. However, if you have other LEDs that are part of this panel that don't conform to this grid, uh, you might want to rotate it in relation to the other stuff you're, you've already put down or you're about to put down. Uh, and I'll show you that in a sec. So resolution, uh, of course you can adjust this to whatever you want. Uh, well, that's probably a little too many. Um, 10. 10 is pretty standard resolution. Uh, what else here? Uh, oh yeah, so count, this is, as you can see, grayed out. You can't type in it because uh, you're calculating everything from the resolution. Uh, every other generator works the other way around. You specify the count and it kind of calculates everything else for you. Um, one really important critical option I almost forgot, uh, reverse every other row. This is super useful. Sometimes your, um, your square or rectangular arrays are going to be um, zigzagging like they were before. This is a more efficient way to wire things, but uh, depending where you buy it from or where you get it or if you just decide to make it get away, you might have this layout where it goes left to right, left to right, left to right. Again, just a quick way to switch that and that respects all the settings in here, so um, that will always be consistently uh, set up. So, I'm going to close that for now and let's jump over here to Arc. Arc is uh, another one that's a little bit different. Uh, let's see here we have LED count. It's not grayed out. We can specify a number like uh, let's say 16. And uh, we can rotate, we can scale, center, X, Y, arc is the uh, how much of the arc is complete. 
by the way, the little red X and the green dot, um, green is the beginning of the signal chain and X is the end, so something to be aware of. Uh, let's throw a noise. Okay, so let me go through the rest of these real quick. Um, box, we have box. Uh, again, if I do 16, smaller number, you can see kind of what's going on. Uh, very, very similar, uh, you're just making a box. Uh, you can rotate it, pixel offset is actually specific to box, so if you do this, you can actually offset which where the start of the strip is um, in the signal chain, so useful. 15, you can rotate, stuff like that. Uh, here's where the really interesting thing comes into play. If you have two of these open at once, um, you get really weird, wonky results, and uh, that's intentional. Uh, if you'll notice, if you change the LED count, so if arc has 16 uh, and box has 32, our, our generators disappear, and we have this warning that comes up that says blending only works if the LED count matches across all active generators. Um, so one of the cool features of the generators uh, is that you can blend your your panel definitions. This is really cool. Um, it's fun to look at, obviously, but it's it's even more useful when it comes to mapping. You might be wondering, well, why would I want uh, a weird shape like that? Like, who would ever lay out their LEDs like this? Well, maybe not anyone. Um, but sometimes you want to do maps that are not um, literal representations of the physical points, but sometimes you want to do an abstract mapping. Uh, and you can do a lot of really cool effects. Again, this is something I'm going to get into in another video later because it's a little more advanced, but for now, just be aware that you can do abstract mapping as well as physical mapping, and that is very highly supported in the Smart Clip Editor and the Performer Mode and other parts of the software. So, but for this blending to work, you have to have equal number of LEDs per generator. So if I open up grid, again, the same thing happens because the grid is not, it's 100 and you got 16 and 16. Um, noise generator uh, is a little more, I think, useful in general for abstract mapping. Uh, again, it's, it's telling us we can't because they're not matching, but as soon as we set it to, to 16 as well, um, they match. So if we turn off arc, uh, let me just turn that off. Um, what we have is just a patch of noise. These are, are randomly scattered points between negative uh, 5 and 5 on both axes. Uh, you can change the seed, uh, which just randomizes it. Uh, so it's a 0. You get, you get this number, which is kind of cool. Um, but this is, this is kind of useful if you, are, if you have an arc and you want to introduce a little bit of noise to the arc. Uh, let's say we have 64 and 64 um, gives you a better uh, idea of what you can do with this. If you want to do an animation that's kind of gritty and and just kind of um, really sparkly, I guess you could say, it depends on, on what content you use, but this is a great way to introduce some grit into your animation without actually having to do that to your animation. Again, we'll get into this later. Super excited to show you this. This is a really cool feature. But for now, just know it exists and know that you have to have matching LED accounts. So um, that's generators. Um, just to guess, to go and go through the actual process so you can see it. Once you specify um, where you want this, and you can have it two over, you click add points, and it, it bakes it into your into your viewport, and then you can continue to add points to your heart's content. Um, you can do a box at that point if you want. Um, five, five. Um, offset. Um, at that one, as you can see, it just adds to our chain. Uh, so you, you can build some pretty interesting shapes that are, are compositions of various primitives, I guess, uh, or generators. Uh, so that's how that works, and you can continue to draw, and then when you're done, you simply define a border. Um, as will snap again to other points. So once you're done with that, uh, th this is chaos, obviously. I don't know if this would be useful, but um, let's just say that's our panel. Once we're done, we can name this uh, chaos panel. We're going to export. So I'll save this panel for later. Uh, you'll see it again in later videos, and we'll come back to that.
Um, we have, by the way, up here we have a frame rate counter, we have the question mark. Question mark is super useful if you're looking for help documentation on this tab or on any other tab. Just click the question mark, it brings up a floating window um, that just gives you a lot of the same information you get when you hit Q and hold hover over anything in the UI. So, um, very useful. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the pixel map editor. That's going to be a long one and it's going to be a good one. Thanks.